this video did not go as planned and it might take a little bit of explaining as to why, but let me take you back to the beginning of the video until the point where I stopped filming and then we'll cut back here. On today's episode to Get That Bread, we're putting this on here. I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're gonna figure it out on the way and see how we go. front wheel off, new parts ready to go. Broken it down into a really simple two-step process. You take the old stuff out and you put the new stuff in. It's that simple. Can I stress enough that I have no idea what I'm doing? Um, all I have literally done is watched about 40 YouTube videos on how to do this, so I thought I'd give it a crack. It's really late in the afternoon at the moment and then Woody's coming over tomorrow to uh, give me a hand in the morning, so we'll see how far I get this afternoon. Pretty much what we're replacing in here is shocks and then the upper control arms as well. And then everything else in here stays as it is. Apparently, what we need to do is get these lines out of the way and then get this brake line out of the way as well. Because once we crack this one here, this is all gonna fall down. So we don't want anything to stretch when that happens. Um, I think I should probably take the sway bar off as well. Just to give it a bit more room to move. A bit of leverage is actually amazing. Now, I don't actually own a mallet, so I don't know if this is actually gonna be enough force. Trusty old hammer. Awesome. Yeah, before I get ahead of myself. So that's released there now, but what'll happen is as I take this off, this is gonna wanna drop down now. So I'm gonna put the jack underneath here just to support it. Oh, ouch. So, what we're doing now, it's taking that flappy bit off. We've got better access to the bolt here on the upper arm. It's just the one on the other side I'm gonna struggle to get to because I don't have the spinner big enough so I'll have to get the shifting spinner for it and I'm going to take this ring off before I de-glove my finger as well. pushing down on here to get the, the coil out. That's what popped off. I mean, I think, it, I have no idea. Maybe I can just push it back on, figure it out. It's like it's not, it's not broken or anything, it's just off where it usually sits. So I made sure I ordered the spring rate that takes 100 kilos, because we've got the bar and a winch going on the front. But yeah, these stock ones have suffered with that bull bar on it for long enough. It's only a little bit longer. This is meant to be set at three inch, so 
I'm not too sure. I might just get it in there and see what happens. We have old versus new. Looks a little bit sturdier. You look at them side by side. But there's actually quite a bit involved with these upper arms. More than I thought. I've just, just got it set to the same length as the standard one at the moment. But pretty much you want the grease nipples facing up. But once it's actually bolted in, when you untighten these little bolts with the Allen key here, you can actually, it'll adjust the length without spinning this part kind of thing when it's actually on the on the car, which is kind of cool. So that'll bolt in there and then once you've got it to the length you want, to then stop this spinning, you put bolts through this bit and it'll clamp there. So it's a little bit involved. Um, it is all in the instructions and everything, but um, yeah, kind of cool. So you can get a fair bit of length coming back out. So if you've got a really uh, lifted car, you can get, get it so it's dropping far enough kind of thing. So yeah, I just got it set for the stock length for now and then see how that goes and then I'm assuming because I'll have to take it for an alignment obviously after we pop this in and um, they can mess around with it and get it sitting how it um, has to sit but a pretty cool piece of kit um, and one thing too it also comes with these little like p-clamp things which will screw into this section here and then that'll hold the ABS line The next day. This is where we got up to. So he's still in pieces. Woody is on his way to help today. You can see that lovely leak happening there. That's, that's probably been leaking for a while, looking at that. Ankles when I sit like that for too long. <coughs> Jar feel? Jar feel, bro. Don't even get me started on Jar feel. <laughs> Once we finally got everything bolted back in, I realized the reservoir was actually routed the wrong way. It's meant to go back through underneath the steering arm there. So we had to take it all out and chuck it back in again. Woody has to leave, but we successfully undid everything. Put it back together and we're about to put the remote resi in. Thanks for helping Woody. Oh, mate. Just got another three corners to go. <laughs> but I feel like now I have an understanding of how to get it fucking back together. It should be quicker. The next one will be like at least half the time. Yeah, and if I'm not trying to stop and film and just time lapse and stuff, it'll be a bit better. Maybe. Anything you want to say before you go? I wish I could stay. Same. This is what it is. We gotta do what we gotta do. Woody then had to take off and go home, so I had a crack at doing the other side all by myself.
the next day. Back. It is a new day. We've just finished work. Um, thankfully, I can work from home because this wasn't going anywhere. Uh, what did I get up to? So we've got the fronts in. So she's moonbeaming a little bit at the moment. Um, so we still need to torque and lock tight everything at the front. But before we get to that, let's chuck everything in the rear as well. So then it'll just be one big Loctite talking session at the end. Second thoughts about doing this because I don't know if this is the right way to think about it, but once I take that out, there's nothing attaching this corner of the vehicle to the actual chassis. So if I take that off, is this not just gonna come down? Because I've got, so I've got two stands on the back. I was right, if I had to keep going and undid that, this whole side would have just come down. So we've rejigged it. So I've got it sitting on the jack stand up here. That's not holding the weight at all. And I've got the jack stand over under here, ready to catch the axle as it comes down. And yeah, so now, I'm gonna take the shock out and the springs out. This should just sort of come down gently onto that. And we should be able to put the new stuff in. That was a bit of a gin around. So it was at that point where I sort of stopped and was kind of just staring at, staring at everything, um, staring at the Ranger, staring at the lift kit and kind of just thinking to myself like, why, 
why am I doing this? Um, why did I buy this lift kit? Um, I think I went into putting the lift kit on, being way too optimistic and thinking that it would just take me like a day to do it. Um, and I think I was just getting like super frustrated, um, making silly mistakes. And um, I had all these thoughts going through my head, like I've been doing like modifications and all that sort of stuff to, to the nav and the ranger for years now and um, still making silly errors and things. So, so I had to turn the camera off and I sort of just sat there staring for ages. <laughs> I don't know, we've probably all been there doing something to our car that should have taken no time at all and then you're there three days later just questioning life but yeah so I had to turn the cameras off and I didn't actually film any more of the installation um, it still took me a few extra nights to do it and whilst I was sort of sitting there just staring at staring at everything I think I've I sort of realized that I've kind of lost my way or direction with what get that bread's meant to be about I think in the first video I ever made, I said something like, like I'm doing this to show you that you don't need to be a mechanic, like you don't, you don't have to have the previous skills or anything like that to, to do this sort of stuff, you can, you can give it a go yourself. For some reason I thought that if I buy this lift kit, which is the same brand and everything that all these other YouTubers that I aspire to be, like use, then I don't know, maybe this video will be the one that, I don't know, gets attention and all that sort of stuff. So I, um, so I think this video and putting the lift kit on the, on the Ranger was a bit of a wake up call for myself to come back down to earth a little bit because like, yeah, doing YouTube full time would be amazing, but that's years down the track, right? Like, and that's even if, if it takes off, like it's, yeah, it's years and years of hard work and I'm only a couple of years in, so. What am I trying to say? Um, so I don't regret buying the lift kit or anything like that. I've been driving around for the past couple of weeks with it and it's mint pretty keen to take it off-road and everything, but um, I still haven't even finished it. I need to put the brake lines on, the diff drop kit and everything, but um, the majority of it's done. So I don't regret buying it. It's just, it's been a big, yeah, just, a, it's been a big wake up call, I guess you could say. When I was sitting there staring into the abyss, um, Woody sent me a message and I'll read it out. So he said, remember the people you watch have done this a dozen times already. Imagine filming yourself again, even after just this one time. And he was bloody right. Um, don't tell him I said that. Uh, Woody, if you're watching this, don't get a big head, but it took me seven hours to do the first side of the rear of the Ranger. And then the next night, it literally took me an hour and a half to do the next side. So it was only because I kept making silly mistakes the first time and I didn't make those mistakes again because I had already made them the night before. And yeah, I sort of lost my way in terms of like that, like all of this is literally the point of get that bread and I lost touch with the why I started this channel and everything. So I thought I'll make this video as a very big reminder to myself and my future self that don't forget why you started doing this. I started this to show people you don't need skills to do it. You can you can do it yourself, you can learn. Um, you literally just have to, like the name of the channel, get up and get that bread and give it a go. So anyway, big spiel over. I have the takeaway from this video is that if it's the first time you're doing something, of course it's not gonna go according to plan. Um, you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna learn from them and you're gonna be better better after the fact. So um, I hope everyone has a friend in their life like Woody. Um, Cause yeah, that text message when I was sitting there in the, <laughs> sitting there on the cold concrete floor in the garage, um, gave me the motivation to keep going and just get the, get the job done. So I don't know what the next video is gonna be.
I should probably put those brake lines on at some point in time in that diff drop kit before I go off road. So I'm sure there'll be some more mistakes to be made doing that because I've never done that before. I've never bled any brakes before as well. So hmm. until next time, get up, get that bread. You've got two hands, use them, and I'll see you next time.